Throughout the commercial glider pilot practical test standards, there are several tasks that require that the applicant accomplish an appropriate checklist. This video will identify those tasks. In the practical test standards, in the important introduction section, the applicant's use of checklists is discussed. Throughout the practical test, the applicant is evaluated on the use of an appropriate checklist. Proper use is dependent on the specific task being evaluated. The situation may be such that the use of the checklist while accomplishing elements of an objective would either be unsafe or impractical, especially in a single pilot operation. In this case, a review of the checklist after the elements have been accomplished would be appropriate. Division of attention and proper visual scanning should be considered when using a checklist. The following are tasks where the applicant's use of a checklist is required. Area of operation, pre-flight procedures, task A, assembly of the glider. The checklist for the assembly of the glider components and securing the connections for flight controls may be found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook that is specific to that glider. Properly conduct a critical assembly check and a positive control check of the glider components and controls. Area of operation, pre-flight procedures, task C, pre-flight inspection. The FAA PTS requires that the applicant use a written checklist for the pre-flight inspection of the glider. The basis of this checklist is found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook for that specific glider. When inspecting the flight control pushrod or cable attachments, use caution to not inadvertently disconnect any flight control attachment hardware, safety pin, locking pin or sleeve device such as found on the quick disconnect or automatic hookup connectors. Additional checklist items to the manufacturer's checklist may be added as appropriate by the glider owner or your club management. Area of operation, launches and landings. Note the examiner will select the kind of launch based on the applicant's qualifications. Aero tow, ground launch or self-launch. Task B, before takeoff check. The primary before takeoff checklist is found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook for the specific glider. Several standard checklists have evolved such as CB SIFT CBE. These checklists should be developed using the checklists in the glider flight manual as a starting point. Additional items on a before takeoff checklist may be added by the glider owner or the soaring club management. Let's discuss two of the items in the before takeoff checklist. Canopies closed and locked. The canopy locking mechanism, lever or latch will vary among the glider types. There is no industry standard for locking the canopies, so be 100% positive that the canopies are locked. Pay particular attention to locking the rear canopy of a two-seat glider. Spoilers or dive brakes closed and locked. This is probably the most important checklist item from the standpoint of risk management and launch accident prevention. Look and feel the difference between closed and then locked. The applicant's use of a pre-landing checklist is required in these areas of operation. Traffic patterns and landings. Area of operation, airport and glider port operations, task B, traffic patterns, and area of operation, launches and landings, Task Q, Normal and Crosswind Landing. The primary pre-landing checklist is found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook for the specific glider. Several standard checklists have evolved, such as Woof Stall. These checklists are developed using the checklist in the glider flight manual as a starting point. Many flight instructors and examiners 
prefer that the pre-landing checklist be completed before entering the landing pattern in order that the pilot's recognition and reaction to constantly changing external factors can be accomplished without the distraction of accomplishing the checklist while on the downwind or base leg of the pattern. These external factors may include observing air traffic, estimating the angles to the landing area, adjusting the effects of the wind, lift, or sink throughout the pattern. Since most training gliders do not have retractable landing gear, flaps, drag chutes, or carry water ballast, the use of these devices and the corresponding levers and placards should be discussed during training and on flight reviews as the pilot may move up to higher performance sailplanes that may have these devices, which will increase the pilot workload in the landing pattern. Area of Operation post-flight procedures, task after landing and securing. After landing, the basis of this checklist is found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook for the specific glider. Additional items on an after landing checklist may be added that could be specific to the airport environment by the glider owner or the soaring club management. Securing the glider, Consult the checklist found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook for the specific glider. Care must be taken to secure the glider from damage due to wind gusts or from a ground collision with other aircraft or vehicles. Tie down the glider or place it into a hangar. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for proper tie down points and the instructions on how to properly move the glider without damaging the airframe or flight controls. All checklists are developed from the checklists found in the flight manual or pilot operating handbook for the specific model of glider. Consult with your flight instructor to learn about and understand any additional items added by the glider owner or soaring club management. Checklists for the kind of glider launch, aero tow, ground launch, or self-launch will be different and will be specific to that kind of launch.